Take you in for Phoebe. Hello, Tim. On your way home? Oh, finally. <laughs> oh, my feet ain't half numb. Is something the matter in there? Yeah, just a light. I noticed it's been burning for a couple of days now. Wondering if I shouldn't step in and tell them about it. I reckon they must have left it burning by mistake, you know. <laughs> They'll know all about it when they get their gas bill next month. Yeah, I know. It seems a shame, though, doesn't it? Still, I don't think it'll do much harm to go and ask them if they know it's on. <laughs> I hope they didn't tell you to mind your own business and pack you off. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to have my pint before supper. Cheerio. Cheerio, Tim. Afternoon, sir. It's an Egyptian, as a matter of fact. I'd read about it before, but I'd uh, never worked with it. That's the teapot! Oh, yes, so it is. I'm sorry about that, but there doesn't seem to be anything else empty at the moment. There's nothing immune in this place! Really, Holmes, there must be something else you could have used. Oh, well, nothing to worry about, Watson. It's perfectly soluble. I'll have the pot washed out and ready for use by the time you come back from Regent's Park. You can save yourself the trouble! That's the last drop I ever drink out of that pot. I say, Holmes. How in thunder did you know I was going to Regent's Park? Well, a simple deduction, my dear fellow. Take a look at your clothes. Oh, what's the matter with them? I might easily be going to the club in these. You're immaculate, except for those old shoes. Hmm? Oh, oh those, I've forgotten all about those. So I deduce that you're going to a place where you're likely to meet people, but also you're liable to scuff your shoes. The gravel paths of a public park seem to fit that perfectly. Hmm. But why Regents, particularly? Uh, we're lunching at 12.30, and since it's now nearly 11, I assume that your choice of parks is limited to the most convenient one, uh, that being uh, Regents, of course. Uh -huh. hmm. Simple deduction, really. I wonder who that can be this time of the morning. Would you care to deduce it, Watson? No, no I think it'd be simpler if I just uh, open the door. Would you be Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Uh, no, but won't you come in? It's Mr. Holmes I've got to be finding. I am Sherlock Holmes, madam. Uh, won't you be seated? I will, that. Sure, I've lost a bit of my breath. Have you come far? A clean up from Chelsea, I have, sir. Well, that's a long way indeed. Uh, may I introduce my very good friend and colleague, Dr. Watson? Good morning, dear. How are you doing? My name's Dugan, sir. Mary Dugan. No doubt you find it a bit odd having a stranger burst upon you in the height of the morning like this, but I've come from a house black with sorrow to ask your help. It is the house I work in. Is there some difficulty in the house? Difficulty? Aye, and more. There's murder. Ah, murder, is it? Now, this is most interesting. Uh, won't you go on, Mrs. Dugan? It is the master of the place himself, Mr. Harringway, that's dead. Found by the bobby of our street. Filled with a dose of something with a great long name, the old man was. But surely, if he was found by the police... The police? Should it them that brings me here? For they've come and rode young Mr. Vernon off to jail for committing the crime. Mr. Vernon? Aye, uh, a strapping lad who's soon to marry Mr. Harringway's stepdaughter, Janet. I gather that you're not in agreement with the police, Mrs. Dugan. I'm sure that's the problem. That's what's been torturing me all through these black nights and making me life unbearable. For you see, Mr. Holmes, it was my testimony, and my testimony only, that's put Mr. Vernon in jail. It's because of what I told the police that he's... He's sitting in the cell this very moment, waiting for his time to go. 
And yet you believe that young Vernon is innocent? I'm certain the lad's innocent. Sure, I feel it in my bones. Yes, but I say, didn't you tell the police the truth? I told them the truth, sir, but somehow, unbeknownst to me, I must have lied. Perhaps you'd better start your story from the beginning, Mrs. Dugan. Aye. Well, it all happened last Friday afternoon. Late in the afternoon it was, for I was soon to be leaving the house, uh, having the weekend off as I do. It would be about five o'clock, when there was suddenly a great clatter upon the door. Hello, Mrs. Dugan. Oh, good afternoon to you, Mr. Vernon. Mr. Haringway asked to see me. Is he in his usual ugly mood? I'm sure you shouldn't be talking like that, Mr. Vernon. You know, it makes Miss Janet very unhappy to hear you two fighting all the time. Well, if he wasn't such a stupid old... Where is Janet? Oh, she's away to her aunt's in Manchester. She wasn't to go until tomorrow. Oh, I know nothing of that, sir. But I can swear he put her on her way this very afternoon. I doubt if her aunt's sick again. It looks like another of his tricks to keep us apart. Well, where is he? In his study. Uh, he's asked me to show you right in. Just a minute. Uh, my coat, I forgot something. All right. Come in. Mr. Vernon, sir. Would that be all? No, Mrs. Dugan. I want you to remain. Remain, sir? Just sit over there and listen to every word that's said. What is this? What have you got in your mind now? Young man, I have a very simple offer to make. And I want Mrs. Dugan here to be witness to it. Well, what kind of offer? I'll give you a thousand pounds to clear out of Janet's life. You must be out of your mind. On the contrary. Only a fool would refuse such beneficence. You disgust me. Your tastes don't interest me. I want only to rid you from Janet's life. Stay right here. I intend to finish. I happen to be in love with Janet. But I could hardly expect you to understand a thing like that. A thousand pounds is a lot of money. And for you, probably more than you ever have the rest of your life. Think of it. A thousand pounds just for clearing out. When I clear out, as you put it, I'm going to take Janet with me. I warn you, this is your only chance to gain anything. You must always win, mustn't you? Every little thing has to be your way. Even if it means destroying your daughter's happiness. I'm not interfering with her happiness. I only want to cleanse her life of a bit of trash. You may have had her under your fist all her life, but she'll break away now. No matter what you do, Janet's going to marry me. Mr. Hargrave! Uh, uh, medicine. My medicine in the, in the cupboard in the next room. I'll get it. Green bottle on shelf. I never lose, Mrs. Dugan. I never lose. Oh, hurry, Mr. Vernon, please, hurry. Coming. need to stare. I'm all right. Now get out of here. Both of you. Get out. Get out. A few minutes later, I left the house. And that's the last I ever saw of Mr. Haringway. Alive. I see. And what did you tell the police when they questioned you? you sure, I told them everything. Just as it happened. About the bottle Mr. Vernon took out of his coat pocket, the sudden quarrel, Mr. Harringway's attack of illness, and Mr. Vernon going to get the medicine. 
And this was sufficient to have young Vernon remanded on a charge of murder? Aye, for the police informed me that it was the medicine, the very medicine that I saw Mr. Vernon give Mr. Haringway that killed the poor old man. They say that poison was put into the medicine. Yes, but look here, that certainly seems to point towards the young man. When he went to obtain the medicine, he apparently slipped in the lethal dose. It seems that way, sir. But in my heart, I can't bring myself to believe it of him. That Inspector Lestrade, though, he won't believe another thing else. Lestrade, eh? Uh, he's the policeman who seems to be in charge of it all. Indeed. Inspector Lestrade, you hear that, Watson? We must go around and see him. Well, if you think it'll help. Aye. Then a thousand blessings on the pair of you. I don't know what we can promise you, Mrs. Dugan. I shall have to have a word with Mr. Vernon before I can express an opinion on the case. However, we shall certainly go and see Inspector Lestrade at once. I sure I know it looks dark and all, but I must keep up hope. Well, I must be off. I, I don't like leaving Miss Janet alone for so long. Naturally, Mrs. Dugan. Well, we'll certainly do our best. Thank you. I can't see any reason for it. The man is guilty. Anything you want to know, I can tell you myself. Oh, come, come, Lestrade. I only want to ask the young man a few questions. It's time for my lunch. You needn't come. Now, look here, Holmes. There was a very large dose of strychnine in that medicine. The only person who could possibly have put it there was young Vernon. Or Mrs. Dugan? No, oh, she didn't have any reason to. Besides, Vernon was a chemist. He had access to all sorts of poisons. Indeed, he was a chemist. You hear that, Watson? Young Vernon was a chemist. Hmm? Yeah. Oh. Oh. yeah, yes, indeed, Holmes. Yes, I thought you'd be interested to hear that. Well, I am indeed. It is most important, and I insist upon seeing the young man immediately. We have no time to lose, Lestrade. No time to lose. Oh, all right, all right, all right. I don't see what you can possibly gain from this. But if you insist, you can see for yourself. His whole attitude merely supports the evidence. Well, here we are. Inspector Lestrade. Yes, sir. Well now, Vernon. Well now, Inspector. How many times a day are you going to bring me up here and subject me to your idiotic questions? I've already told you everything I know. I'm getting tired of repeating it every half hour so that it'll penetrate your dense brain. Look here, young man, that's hardly an attitude to take. You're charged with the most serious crime. Indeed, I am. And since it appears I'm to pay for it, my only regret is that I didn't have the pleasure of committing it. There's just one point... I don't know who you are, but you may as well know that I don't wish to answer any of your questions either. It appears I've talked myself to the gallows, and that should be enough. So good day to the lot of you. Good day to you, Mr. Vernon, and thank you very much. You've been most helpful. Young rogue. Oh, very interesting, Lestrade. Thank you, Baker Street, Holmes. Certainly not, Watson. We have a killer to catch. Killer? Yes. What do you think you were just talking to? A very furious young man, Lestrade. But he's as innocent as Dr. Watson, me, and you. Or perhaps not quite as innocent as you. you possibly find to be so amusing? Huh? Oh, I was thinking about Lestrade's face when that young scamp called him an idiot. <laughs> Holmes, do you really believe that young man's innocent? Strychnine, Watson. Hmm? Combined with the fact that young Vernon's a chemist. Tell me, how quickly does strychnine act? Oh, a matter of minutes. Half an hour at the most. Exactly. He did not know that the house would be empty when he went to visit old Mr. Herringway. He fully expected that Mrs. Dugan and Janet would be there. Right enough. Mrs. Dugan indicated that. All right. Now, would a man with a wide variety of poisons to choose from choose a quick-acting drug, which offered him no chance of an alibi? Or would he be more likely to choose something a little slower, which would allow him ample time to be miles away at the time of death? Yes, I... I follow your reasoning, Holmes, but... Surely, you, you, you don't accept that as conclusive. Oh, I didn't, until I spoke to young Vernon. But well, you, you didn't learn anything from him, did you? Ah, here's the mortuary. Uh, shall we go and have a close look at the victim, Watson? 
Holmes asked to see the medical examiner's report, and as we prepared to enter the mortuary, he explained his theory that Vernon's violent temper didn't fit into the cold-blooded pattern of this crime. Hmm, a particular sort of fellow, our friend Harringway. No, why do you say that? Well, notice the well-kept hair, the neatly trim moustache. Mm-hmm. Wasn't so particular about his hands, was he? What do you mean, Watson? Well, look, the dirt definitely packed in under those nails, even gone into the cuticles. Hmm. Well, I say it's a bit incongruous with this perfect manicuring. Yes, especially as this hand's an absolutely immaculate. Wait a minute, Watson. What? This isn't ordinary dirt. This is soil. Well, amateur gardener, perhaps. Oh. These hands never did any gardening. They display a lifelong devotion to immaculate cleanliness. And this hand obviously became dirty too near to death to be cleaned. Mr. Holmes, here's the report you asked for, sir. Oh, thank you. What are you doing that for, Holmes? You know the cause of death was strychnine. Hmm, this should interest you, Watson. Listen. Mm -hmm. The blood test indicated an extreme leukocytic state, sufficient to be diagnosed as advanced leukocythemia. Well, Mrs. Duggan said he was ill, but not to that extent. Watson, tell me, how long do you estimate Harringway would have lived had he not been given that dose of strychnine? Well, it's difficult to judge with this information, but I'd say... Well, certainly under a year. Then we are looking for someone who couldn't afford to wait a year. An impatient murderer. Then that fits in with Vernon's violent temperament. It appears so, Watson. It appears so. And yet there's still something missing. A bottle. A little mysterious bottle. Watson, would you go and collect Mrs. Dugan and take her around to Vernon's apartment? Ah, yes, of course. What will you be doing meantime? Oh, I'm going over to Vernon's place now. There are a few things I want to check over before you arrive. But, uh, it's, it's bound to be locked up. How are you going to get in? Oh, with a key. Have you got the key to Vernon's apartment? I hope so. We came as quickly as we could. Thank you, Watson. Do you think it's proper bursting into a, a strange man's apartment like this? Well, it isn't proper in the least, Mrs. Dugan, but uh, if we're going to help young Vernon, I'm afraid there's very little choice. Oh. What is it you want me to do? Do you believe, Mrs. Vernon, that you could identify the bottle that he took from his coat pocket on the day of the murder? Yes, I think I can. Good. Then would you mind examining these and uh, take your choice, if any, Absolutely certain. Thank you, Mrs. Dugan. Thank you very much. Holmes! Oh, it's all right, Watson. It's quite harmless. It's oil of cloves. Oil of cloves? Mrs. Dugan, I presume that your employer was a teetotaler. Oh, he was that. There was never a drop of anything at all in the house. Hated the stuff he did. Yes, yes but is it important, Holmes? It's essential for young Vernon, Watson. We have now only to visit Mr. Harringway's study to forge the final link of proof against a most amazing murderer. Really, Miss Harringway, I hope you realize that in this case I find myself in a particularly difficult position. But as a police officer, I have no alternative. I must follow the dictates of the law. But Tom didn't do it. He couldn't have done it. It just can't be. Precisely the opinion I expressed to you this morning, Lestrade. Holmes! 
Oh, Miss Janet, this is Mr. Sherlock Holmes. And this here gentleman's Dr. Watson, his friend. It is because of me that they're here. You see, I went to them begging for the help. Help? It was your fiancé's arrest that prompted Mrs. Dugan, I believe. I see. Sit down. Sit down, please. Well, really, Holmes, why do you persist in this? I've always had the greatest respect for your ability, but in this case, well, you astound me. Oh, now, now, come along, Miss Trent. Well, it's true. Vernon had access to poison. He was here when it was taken. And above all, look at the motive. Just look at the motive. Who else had such a motive? Who else? Inspector, you didn't know my stepfather. He was a tyrant who loved nothing, no one. His whole ambition was power, and his whole pleasure was to rule. To my stepfather, my marriage meant only a loss of power, part of his kingdom, and he fought it in every way. Life here became unbearable after I met Tom. Mrs. Dugan can testify to that. Well, it is true he was not a kindly man, and he did begin to get a bit odd of late. I see. There were some flowers in this room. Where are they? Flowers, sir. Holmes. Now he's interested in flowers. Petunias, perhaps? Mrs. Dugan? Why, sure. I put them out in the yard to get the sunlight, sir. So dark it was in here. Then there were some flowers. Mrs. Dugan, would you be kind enough to fetch them, please? Yes, sir. Holmes, what have flowers got to do with... Watch. You know, Inspector, your difficulties in this case really must be overlooked. Do you know that you've been deliberately duped? And very cleverly, I might add. I haven't been duped at all. I've got my man. Now, you see, you were looking for a murderer, whereas, of course, there isn't one. First, it's petunias. Now there's no murder. There's a body, but no murder. You see, Mr. Harringway committed suicide. There was no indication of suicide whatsoever. No message, nothing. Well, naturally there was no indication of suicide because it was deliberately planned to look like murder. Are you serious? Completely, Miss Herringway. You see, your stepfather was more of a tyrant than you imagine. Losing you to Vernon meant losing power. And so first of all, he tried to bully him. Then he tried to bribe him. And when that failed, he tried to kill him. Mr. Harringway tried to kill Vernon? Yes, Watson. By committing suicide in such a way that Vernon would be blamed and executed for Harringway's death. The stage was set, the heart attack was feigned, and Vernon was sent to get the medicine. If Harringway took the poison himself, where did he hide the bottle? Of course, that's right. The poison acted too fast for him to dispose of the container. But he did dispose of the container, Watson. And if my theory is correct, it should be in one of the two flower pots that Mrs. Dugan is holding. And a chemical analysis will reveal that it contains strychnine. The dirt under the fingernails. Exactly, Watson. And you said it got there close to the time of death. And Harringway committed suicide. Yes, Lestrade. And Tom is innocent. Go! Go! <laughs> Simple. Completely. Holmes, you know, you never did explain to me what the oil of clothes was for. Oh, you mean the mysterious little bottle that Vernon removed from his coat pocket? Yes, ma'am. Right. Oh, it's really quite simple, you know. You see, Vernon stopped at a pub for a few stiff whiskies to uh, brace himself for his interview with Harringway. But the old man was violently opposed to the use of alcohol, so he had to do something to remove the evidence from his breath. Uh, oil of cloves is quite common for that purpose. Ah, I see. Tea? Uh, no, 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 none, none for me. No, I've, uh, I've had some before. I, uh, my digestion is not quite up to it. Your digestion? Uh, yes, I, um, I forgot and... Uh, and had mixed our tea with some of that uh, rare Egyptian poison. <clears throat> but, but confound it, man, that the, the, the tea's ruined. Well, fair enough, old man, but so's my poison. <laughs> 